Hello friends, thank you for joining me on this trip. In this video my plan is to build a primitive shelter. I'm going to try to look for some materials to start a bow drill fire and I'm going to cook up a ghost pepper cheeseburger. So stay with me, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it's going to be almost 90 degrees today. So I have made sure to find a nice shady spot. I'm close to the water and there's plenty of materials down on the ground that I should be able to build my natural shelter using stuff that's just right in this area. I do have plenty of time to get this shelter done, so I'm not in a huge hurry, but I am going to go ahead and get started. So stick with me and we'll get this thing done. Okay, so I'm thinking that's going to be it right there. I think that's a good height. The only thing that's not going to be primitive about this shelter is I am going to use some bank line to lash these two poles together. I could go out and find a tulip poplar tree and make some natural cordage, which I plan to in a future video show you guys how to make natural cordage. But for time's sake, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use some bank line, lash this together. Yeah, I think that's going to I think that's going to work. And then I'll take one long pole, put right here, and it's going to go down at an angle to the ground. And I'm going to leave that stick out a couple of feet, the way I can hang my light from there. Alright, well I'm going to go find one more log. And then I'll start lashing all this together. Now the bipod lash is pretty much the same thing as the tripod lash that I've shown you in a few videos. End it with a clove hitch. Put an overhand knot there, that way it doesn't come back through. The idea behind all these lashes, these bipod lashes and these tripod lashes, so you do it in a way to where when you're done, you can take all this apart very easily and reuse it. There's no crazy knots that you have to try to untie. Okay, I think that might do it. Probably should have went a little higher, but this will still work. Thought it was going to stand on its own there for a second. Okay. I think that'll work. I am going to have to straighten this up just a little bit. Bring this over. All right. And I'll turn this to the side and I'll use one of these little tiny branches sticking off the side here to hang my light. I'm going to crawl in here, make sure I got enough coverage. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Whew. All right. Now we're going to start really putting on the sides for the frame. So let's get going. All right, at this point, I'm just going to get the skeleton going. That's what I call it anyways. Okay. Just whatever you find or whatever you cut up, just kind of match it to there. Let's see. This one could probably go on this side. Yeah, we'll put that one on that side. Okay, got a lot more work to do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop this dead pine because it's right next to the shelter. Plus, I can use it to finish up the rest of my frame here. So, we'll go ahead and get this down. Push some of this out of the way. Nice. Alright guys, so this is the frame. Took me probably about an hour or so to get that done. 
Uh, these gaps here, they are a little wide, but I think they're going to be okay. I'll throw a bunch of pine limbs on there and see how it looks. But as you can see, I have a lot of room on the inside. I got enough room in there where I could probably keep my bag in there too. And here's this side. I got all those logs back at a slight angle from that center pole there. I may need to put one more right here in this gap. But uh, I think it's time to get some pine limbs on top of here. Oh, it's time to take a little break. And I have ticks all over me. They are all over my legs. There's one, two, three, four. This is nuts. I normally use Vicks Vapor Rub. Normally you put Vicks Vapor Rub all over your legs, on your boots, arms, back of your neck. Normally that does a pretty good job of keeping them away, but these ticks must be on steroids because they don't care. They are everywhere, dude. Oh my gosh. Well, I got more vapor rub in here. I may just cake it on. That's probably what I'm gonna do. See if that helps. I'll put it on the bottom of my pant legs here. Put that all around. They are just everywhere. There's another one. Anyways, we'll see if that makes a difference. I'll put it on extra thick that time. But anyways, with everything going on in the world, the world's gone crazy, I figured uh, I'd share with you guys a funny story. Might make you laugh. I know it did me after I was done being mad about it. But last week I had came out here, I planned to make a video. Anyways, I started off it's about a 35 minute drive down here. I get to the gas station, it's about five miles north of here and I normally pick up the last couple things I need, grab a snack, that way I'm not coming out here on an empty stomach. Uh, anyways, I get to the register, realize that I left my card at home. I forgot all about it. So I was mad that I was embarrassed that I had to put everything back and be like, oh, I don't have the money for this. So that, put me in a foul mood for a minute and then I come out here I park the Jeep I put my iPhone my brand new iPhone which is what I normally use to record my videos <coughs> excuse me I put it on the bumper of my Jeep I grab my pack put it on I forgot it was there I shut the dang uh, tailgate of the Jeep right on my iPhone shattered the screen that added to it I thought all right after I was done saying a few bad words, I drove all the way back home and got my camera, which is the camera I'm using now. Drove all the way back, and when I got out here, I dropped my buck saw. It took me about 45 minutes to find it. Backtracking through the woods, there's another thing going. Then, I start getting my camp set up and realize that I had lost my glasses. So after 10 minutes of looking for my glasses, I realized they were on my face the whole time. That's when I knew it was just time to go home. <laughs> I was like, okay, I feel really stupid right now. I'm looking for my glasses. Meanwhile, they're on my face the entire time. It's just time to go home. 
So that's what I did. I went home, relaxed, calmed down, and today so far, everything's been going good. Luckily I had insurance on my iPhone, so that's getting fixed. I should actually get that back Monday. It's just been, it was just a rough weekend. <laughs> But I hope that made you laugh for a minute at least. But it seems like the whole world is going crazy. It's pretty calm out here though. At this point, I'm just going to take whatever's on the ground, break it up, just start throwing it on top there. I'm going to try to get this as waterproof as possible. All these pine needles, leaves, and small sticks will work just fine. Okay, so I've got all the leaves and pine needles and everything I could find on the ground on the sides Here's what it looks like on the inside Now the most important thing is to come in here and look And make sure you can't see any daylight Which you can see a little bit right there. I'll make a note of that Let's see we'll go up Everything else looks pretty good. We've got some spots down here at the bottom on this side and just a little bit on that side it is time for another break let me scooch in here oh yeah i got plenty of room in here i will have to put just a little bit more right here but everywhere else looks pretty good one good thing about throwing all the leaves and other debris on top of the pines is it compresses the pine and helps seal it up even better that way Whew, sorry i'm out of breath i don't do well in the heat it's like 92 degrees out today i am in a nice shady spot but it's still pretty hot but yeah actually instead of taking a break i'm gonna go ahead and get my bed set up here uh, now there's not going to be anything primitive about my bed tonight i have my climate pad my climate pillow i've got my space blanket that i'm going to put on the ground just to give me another layer of protection from the ground i have that now i'll get this blowed up there are ticks all over this thing. I'm gonna have a fun night out here tonight, that's for sure. All right, let's give that a go. Freaking ticks. All right. Let's see. Oh yeah. I may be crawling with bugs all over me tonight, but at least I'll be sleeping on a, something somewhat comfortable. There are ticks all over this. I'm gonna get out of here for a minute. Let that settle down in there. Now that I've got that done, it's time to get a fire going. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna try to do a bow drill fire. If it doesn't work out, I've got a few extra ways to start a fire so
Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a bow drill using pine. What I've done is I found a big pine tree that was laying down. There's a limb sticking up that looks dry. I'm going to get the board and the spindle out of that, hopefully. I've got a piece of fat wood here that I'm going to use as the bearing block. And I found this piece of hardwood here. It's got a fork on the end and it's slightly bowed. That's going to be my bow itself. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I think this is going to be the board. I'm going to split it not directly down the middle, but pretty close. Let's see, do I got something here that might work? Put it one more time right here let's see that'll actually work out because I'll just flatten this out here Make sure this is as flat as possible. I don't really want this dark wood right here. I want this nice light piece here. So I'm going to try to trim some of that off. I think that'll work. Now, usually I don't really care too much about. The type of wood it is as long as it's got the right properties i know pine will work but one thing you can look for is when you have a dry piece of wood if you can put your thumbnail into it and it leaves an indention it's probably pretty good wood to use okay i'm going to flatten out this part doesn't have to be perfect and I just want to say that I'm no expert in this I am getting a lot better at it I'm getting more consistent with it there are some other youtubers out there that probably could explain it a lot better than I can I would refer you to probably corporal corners videos his videos really helped me out a lot when I was learning this so when you're done with this video, if you really want to try doing a bow drill, I would definitely check out his videos. Okay, now I'm just going to even this side up here. What I like to do is make it as wide as my pinky there. So that's almost perfect. Okay. Now before I get too much further into that, I'm going to turn this one into my spindle. So, now on this, I want it to kind of be the diameter of my thumb. So this has a long way to go, and you want it at least as long as hang 10. I make it just a little bit longer. All right, I'm gonna take my ax and knock off some of this extra stuff right here. And you want this as straight as possible. I can see that it does bend slightly. So as I knock this off, I'm going to kind of address that. Okay, we'll come back down to this side. Be very careful. You know, cut yourself with your ax. I'm just gonna finish knocking the bulk of this off.
starting to look like a spindle. Now I can come through, just kind of turn it as I'm going on, going down the spindle here. Let's say that's about the width I want it. So. Okay, now I'm going to go down here. I'll probably make this the end that goes into the bearing block. And this will be the end that goes into the board. Get this middle shaved down. And just smooth out some of these rough spots here. Just lightly take my knife over it. This part's a little fat, so we'll go down that just a little bit. Okay. It's pretty close to straight. Now on this end, I'm just going to turn it into a point. You got to be careful. Go light as you do this because you may accidentally take too much off. Okay, and on this end, we're just going to slightly round it. So go around, go around the spindle. On this end, put a bevel, and then put a bevel on top of the bevel. I'm not really teaching you guys so much how to do this. I know if I would, I'd have you know close-ups of everything but I'm just kind of letting you know my thought process as I'm going through this right now so basically you want it to kind of look like a pencil you know you've got your pointed in and you've got your eraser up here so from there I am going to find out where this part is in the middle make an indention in there Then I'll take this and kind of just push it into there just to get it kind of started. All right, I'm going to tie a bowling knot. I'm going to go right down this fork here. Okay. Then I'm going to cut off just a few feet past the handle, maybe a foot or two. Now, what I'm going to do is, is just put a little beaver chew around this handle here. There's a tick on there. Gosh, there's ticks everywhere. Anyways, just so I could have something to wrap this around. So I'm going to do a beaver chew here. I'm just going to go all the way around, put a little mark all the way around. Then I'm going to turn around and go the opposite way. This just put, this just makes it so it has a little place to sit 
in the handle there. I'm gonna go back, make it a little deeper. Okay, now, I gotta make it a habit of, when I'm done with my knife, I need to start putting it back in my sheath instead of putting it on the ground. It's a bad habit I have. But anyways, we'll turn this, and then I'm gonna leave just a tiny bit of slack in there, and then I'm gonna go around, keep wrapping it, keep wrapping it, then you can have it hold right there. I think that'll work. Alright, right now we're just going to burn in the set. Or oh, actually, hold on. I still got one more step here. I need to make my bearing block. That might help. There we go. We're going to use fat wood because it's self lubricating. If you can't find fat wood, just use any piece of hard wood. I like to use muscle wood. Put an indention in there. There I go again, putting my knife on the ground. Okay. I'm just going to go slow and easy. I'm not putting much pressure on it. I'm just going to marry all three of the pieces together. And you can feel when it's starting to do it, when the friction's starting. Okay, I'd say that's pretty good. Now I'm going to cut my notch. It's just a V notch. This may take a minute, so I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll probably be editing a lot of this, just because it is somewhat of a long process. This is something you do when you have no other way to light a fire. This is, you know, you were out on a canoe trip, you dumped your canoe, your bag is six miles down the river, you need a fire, all your stuff was in your bag. So, it's good to know this skill. This is not something I would ever use unless I really have to. But I have to own this skill. I have to be able to do this every time. So, until I get to that point, and even when I do own it, you still need to practice it. It's just like anything else. You don't do something after a while, you lose it. Okay, now before you actually start your bow drill, you're going to want to make sure you got everything set up. You got your fire lay ready, and this is mostly pine limbs, and you need your bird's nest material, which this is just a bunch of dried grass and hay. You got to make sure you got a lot of it because this stuff will, it does catch fire quickly, but it also burns out very quickly, so you want to make sure you got plenty of it. Have you a nice space out here in front to have it ready. That way, when this, when I get this to light, it needs to go in there quickly and you can get your sticks on top of it. So this is gonna go right here. Put that right there. 
I have my catch. I have my bow. I'm just going to tighten it up real quick. I have my spindle, which I do need to do something to that real quick. This burn in here, you need to get all that off of there. It's fire hardened. You don't want that. So we're going to get all that back off there, get it a nice piece, nice clean piece of wood. This one you want to leave fire hardened. You want this to be hard because you do not want it. You do not want the spindle to wear out. You do not want all the friction up here. So I'm just going to trim this really thin that way even though this will wear out and come down hopefully it buys me some time having this a nice long skinny piece up top here. <laughs> I'm nervous about this guys like I said I'm I'm no expert in this I'm getting good at it but you know even if I fail I'm gonna put this on the video just you know just one of those things you win some you lose some here we go. Now, it's important just to start off slow. You just want to go slow. You don't want to put hardly any pressure on this spindle. You just want to fill up that notch with dust. getting a lot of friction up here so before I go too much further I am going to find a harder piece of wood for the bearing block Start off slow and easy. I'm not putting much pressure on it. Now, once that notch is filled up, then you can increase your speed, which didn't happen. You might have still got it though. Still smoking, that's a good sign. Whew. Might have still got it. Fingers crossed. I do believe, oh yes. Whew. It's cherrying up. Now at this point we can rela relax for a minute. That'll burn for a few minutes. So, you wanna be careful you don't accidentally knock it over. Let that cherry up real good. Bring your bird's nest to this. Bring your bird's nest to the ember. That was sloppy as heck, I'm telling you. But I got her done. Now it ain't over yet. I have to get this, blow this into flame. You wanna wrap around it, but not too tight. Just take it easy. You don't wanna blow too hard, too quickly, because you'll just blow it right out. The more it smokes, the more you blow on it. Whew. That 
took a that took some hair off my arm. Like I said, that hay will burn out quickly, so you got to do this very quickly. Oh man, I am happy. That was sloppy as heck, like I said, but somehow I still managed to get lucky and got it done. That's crazy. All this is pretty much pine. Pine spindle, pine catch, pine board. This is hardwood. This is hardwood with a tick on it, just like everything else. All right. Thank you, Lord. At this point, I'm just going to let all them pine twigs burn down. Pine is excellent for starting a fire, but you don't want to use it to cook because I've done it before and even if you brush your teeth 14 times a day, it'll take you a couple days to get that taste out of your mouth. So we'll let all the pine burn out, get all that resin out of there, and then I'll add a couple pieces of some hardwood on top of there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, cook up a ghost pepper burger. Oh. I'm losing my voice here. All right, this stupid thing's got to come out. As my hair is getting longer, I'm trying to keep it out of my eyes. This looks goofy as heck, but I don't care. I'm letting my hair grow out of. It's at that awkward stage where I look homeless. But anyways, a lot of you guys have been asking how to keep food nice and cool during the summer what I have is these big bags here hefty bags and I got this big old glacier ice there's still half a chunk of ice in this part and I've been out here a while so I've got my cheese separated in its own bag bun in its own bag and the burgers are pretty much thawed but they're still cold. Longer than one day, I really don't know how you'd keep them, how you'd keep them cool. Unless you want to carry a Yeti out here, it ain't gonna happen. Let's see if I can get both burgers to fit on that grill. throw that in there yeah they fit barely but they fit all right it's time for the ghost pepper cheese I haven't tried this before so I'm not really sure if this is super hot or not I know ghost peppers are but that doesn't mean this cheese is we'll let that melt and we should be ready to eat Okay, put that on there. We're gonna make it a double. Look at that thing. That is huge. That'll uh, replenish all the calories I've lost today, that's for sure. So we'll leave this down here. And I'll just let this get clean. Throwing some twigs in there. getting this fire going again and it should we'll just lower that down on there and that fire will clean that for me now you guys know it wouldn't be a pooter stomper video unless I forgot something in this case, I forgot the barbecue sauce. I was going to put some Sweet Baby Ray's uh, sweet and spicy sauce on here, but that's okay. It's gonna be good nonetheless. Cheers. Yeah, it's spicy. Whew. Yep, 
Ghost pepper ain't no joke. I like spicy stuff though. Growing up, all we had was salt and pepper. My mom never even heard of cayenne or oregano or none of that stuff. We didn't season anything. When I got with my wife 15 years ago, almost 16 years now, she introduced me to a lot of stuff I never tried before. I never had a ribeye until I met her. I didn't know what cayenne was. I can remember, I don't remember what she was making, but she was putting a bunch of stuff in it, seasonings, and I was like, what the heck are you doing to that? She goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, what are you putting in there? She goes, seasonings, this is what you do to food. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, we just grew up poor. We didn't have a lot of stuff. We ate the same stuff over and over again. I learned how to make an awesome egg, which eggs are my favorite foods, but I, I learned how to cook eggs perfectly because that's... We had eggs a lot. We'd have spaghetti growing up, chili. Cheap meals that would feed a lot of people and be enough for leftovers the next day. So, I am still pulling ticks off of me. But yeah, now I'm into, you know, Cajun food and peppers and things like that. This is the, uh, I don't remember the brand, but it's like, it's ground chuck, it's brisket, and it's prime rib. So I'm having me a high dollar sandwich right now. Man, this is good. Apologize for talking with my mouth full, but this is delicious. Would have been better with the barbecue sauce, but it's still good. Whew. Now all the work's done. I got my shelter built. Started a bow drill fire today. Cooked me a monster burger, which is pretty cool. I don't know what else to do besides relax. Well, I can probably start picking ticks off of me again. That'd be useful. There's one right there. Come on, dude. There's another one. They're real tiny. You can barely see them. I look like I have rolled around in mud. I feel one on my back, but I can't reach up there. I'm not a big fan of summertime, in case you haven't noticed. I'm a wintertime guy. Normally this time of year I am fishing like crazy, which I'm going to do. Maybe next weekend I might do, I might go out, take the boy. Oh, excuse me, I might take the boys fishing. I don't know if I'm going to record it. I'm not sure if that's something you guys would be into. I got the hiccups now. I shouldn't have inhaled that sandwich. I ate it quick. Little Stacy, he's nine now. He's a good fisherman, man. He's so good, he's, he'll tell me what kind of lure he thinks I should use. He'll be like, all right, Dad, it's cloudy out. You know, the water's this one, this many degrees, you should probably use a spinnerbait. And I look at him like, how do you know that? He's like, Dad, I watch Roland Martin right next to you every time he comes out with a video. I'm like, oh yeah, you do, don't you? But if any of you guys don't know who Roland Martin is, let's just say he's the greatest bass, for, bass fisherman that's ever lived. And he's 80-something years old, coming out with two or three videos a week of him fishing. Man, I am jealous of his life. He just spends his life fishing. That's what it's all about. And you've probably, if you've watched me enough, you've heard me say that the only thing I like more about, more than this, being out in the woods, is being on the water. I love fishing more than anything. So I'm going to be doing a lot more fishing videos this summer. They don't do as well, but like I've told you before, I'm not, you know, I'm going to make the videos that I want to make. You know, I'm going to, I, I, it'd be smart to keep doing these kind of videos because they do do great. But like I said, I'm not motivated by money. I'm not motivated by, you know, uh, I guess fame. I don't have any fame, nor will I probably ever get it. But you know what I'm saying. I'm not motivated by that stuff. YouTube is just fun to do. It really is. I enjoy 
the filming aspect of it and I enjoy the editing part of it and I enjoy talking to you guys so this is a chance for me to do all those things in one but the sun's fixing to go down I'd say I'll get me a little bit of wood I'm gonna throw some pine cones on the fire to get some smoke going to keep these mosquitoes away I haven't really been getting ate up too bad by mosquitoes it's just been ticks which I feel them on my legs again there's one right there this is crazy like I have dealt with ticks you deal with ticks out here but not the numbers that I have today I mean it's just crazy but it's just what goes with it It was a tough day, but it was a good day. I got a lot done. Got this shelter up and was able to start a bow drill fire. So I'm pretty excited about that. Besides all the ticks and the bugs, which that's what you get, you know, when you camp out in the woods. And it ain't summer yet, but it was 92 degrees today, so it might as well be summer. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and hit the sack, and I will see you all in the morning. Somebody on my last video commented, I can't remember who said it, I'm sorry, but somebody had left a comment saying that when I wake up in the morning, I look like I drank a fifth of vodka the night before. I feel like it this morning. I'm a, I've, I'm a hard sleeper. I am not a morning person at all. I do not like getting up in the morning. I mean, I didn't sleep too bad. You know, I got probably four hours of sleep on and off throughout the night. Maybe five. I wasn't really keeping track, but that's not too bad. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I guess I'm going to pack everything up and go home and take a nap and a shower. Bugs weren't too awful bad last night. Whenever I uh, finally went to bed, I um, just covered myself in that vapor rub. So, yeah, it helped keep them off. A lot of people ask, you know, what do you do to keep the bugs off of you? Really, you can't. <laughs> You're never going to go a night in the woods without having bugs on you. Okay, I just mangled this up. Let me try this again. But anyways, there are things that you can do to help at least. You know, get you a good bug spray with DEET. Use Vapor Rub. It seems to help. I noticed yesterday that after I really caked myself with the vapor rub that the bugs were not as bad so you basically just gotta rough it you're gonna have to deal with bugs you're gonna have to deal with mosquitoes and things like that that's just how it is out here but like I always tell everybody a bad night in the woods is still better than a good day at work I am gonna leave this shelter up if this was you know state or federal owned land I'd take it down leave no trace but since this is private property I'm just gonna leave it up plus I want to see how long it'll last I'm hoping it'll last until winter time in that case I'll uh, camp underneath it in the winter time I want to see how it does I know when it when that time comes I'll have to probably redo the top throw a bunch more limbs and debris on there as long as somebody doesn't come through and knock this down the frame should still be standing it's pretty sturdy if you um, don't know how to make natural cordage or you don't have any cordage you can just get two logs that have forks in it 
and you can figure out to get them to lock together and then put this on top I was actually trying to look for something like that but in this area about the only way that that was going to happen was if I cut down a live tree and I try not to do that if I have a choice another thing you'll deal with is dirt coming through landing on your face Okay, so I got everything I think. I got my cook set in there. Got my sleeping pad, my pillow. I put this down the side here. I'll just leave my bow drill stuff in there. Maybe I'll use it again, I don't know. Let's see. I think that's everything. I'm really a fan of this Fall Raven Steuben pack here. Like I said in my last video, I have no idea if I pronounced any of those words right. But this is quickly becoming my favorite pack. It's comfortable as heck. Got all this padding. It's got a lot more room than you'd think. Uh, I just wish it had a uh, way to attach a bedroll to it. But and the most important thing is you can sit on it. There's another tick. Come on, man, give me a break. All right, well, before I let you go, just wanted to quick ask you a quick question. I'm planning on taking the boys fishing next weekend. I'm not sure if that's something you guys would be into seeing or not. I did come out with a couple fishing videos last year and they didn't do well at all, but that might've been just cause back then I had no idea what I was doing on YouTube as far as camera work and stuff I still am learning I still don't really know what I'm doing but I'm getting better at it so just let me know down below in the comments if you know that's something you'd be interested in seeing and you know I'm 50 50 at this point whether I want to record it sometimes I you know I like recording me and the boys just so we can look back on it and sometimes I I don't want to be distracted you know by the camera you know I just want it to be me and the boys um, but anyways, just let me know down below, and uh, I've got a week to figure out what I'm doing. But uh, anyways, guys, if you've made it this far, I do appreciate you watching the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, comment, share this video with your friends if you think they'd be into it. And uh, be sure to follow me on all my social media. I do have a uh, Facebook I do have a Facebook page, and I also have an Instagram. So if you have either one of those, I'll have links down below if you want to follow me on there. As always, I want to thank you for joining me on this trip, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.